So I have my oscilloscope, I have my breadboard, I have a device which I would use as my signal generator here. Okay, and um, so let's build the circuit. Okay, so I have this resistor and this LED connected in series. Okay, so this is the positive of my LED. The negative is connected to the resistor. Okay, and then the other part of the resistor will be connected to ground. Okay, so I'll be charging up this capacitor. It's a 10 volts, 470 UF capacitor. Okay, and then we would discharge it in this resistor circuit. Okay, just to show that yes, of the truth, capacitors do store energy okay so i'll be doing that with my power supply here i'll be charging since it's a 10 volts capacitor i don't want the voltage across its pins to exceed 5 volts okay which is half the voltage rating okay so i connect my negative to the negative pin of the capacitor and my positive to the positive pin okay while doing this i'm careful to make sure they don't um touch each other all right and then I charge it up all right so it's charged and I turn off and I, and I connect this to the resist the circuit of the LED okay so replace the positive on the positive pin and the negative we connect to where our wire is positioned okay all right and then let me turn off one of my lights so we can see the led give off its light okay and we see it fades out right so i have my oscilloscope i have my breadboard I have a device which I would use as my signal generator here. Okay, and um, so let's build the circuit. Okay, so I'm going to use a 2 kilo ohm resistor for this. So I'll place it on a breadboard like this, across like this, and then. Okay, I'm going to be using the signal of 250 hertz and um, 3 volts amplitude. Okay. So let's see what we get across this resistor. I'm also going to connect um, the probe of my oscilloscope so we can see the voltage signal too. Okay, so if I turn that on, we see the second probe has the signal. Okay, so we have a 3 volts peak waveform, right, with 1.8 volts RMS. Okay, so if we, let me bring this down a bit so we can have a clear view of it. Okay, so let's see what effect a capacitor will have on this waveform. Okay, so I have a, we start from a 1 UF capacitor here. So I have a 1 UF 50 volts capacitor here, all right. We would just add that to the circuit and let's see what we get. So I pause my signal and so we connect the positive of our capacitor to the other pin of the resistor and then we have the neutral pin connected to our signal generator. Okay, so we would have our oscilloscope read we have one probe of our oscilloscope with the voltage signal coming in and we have the second probe right at probe one with the signal at the positive pin of the capacitor okay to see what effect the capacitor has on 
the fluctuations okay I want them to have same that. Alright, don't mess it now back on. Okay. As we can see, the effect of the capacitor is same on the yellow wave. Alright, so we see we have a waveform that is quite different from the previous. Okay, and that's because the capacitor charges and discharges okay in attempt to help the circuit so like we say the capacitor doesn't live for itself so in the circuits it's searching for ways it can help signals eliminate fluctuations okay so in this case the capacitor stays busy looking for opportunities to smoothen waveforms to clear out or eliminate fluctuations from waveforms the capacitor has a small capacity it's one uf so you see at this point it charges okay at the point where the waveform if you notice is not starting at the same level with the first wave which we had okay so because it's already charged it discharges before it discharges completely this guy voltage comes back up for it to charge again let's get this signal from the very beginning of the waveform okay so i will start okay so you can see what we have here you see just as the signal generator comes up we have a spike here and the capacitor charges up with the spike you see it doesn't just go up immediately it takes a while for the voltage across the capacitor to climb all right now that's because it's charging up so it absorbs energy up to this point just before the voltage starts dropping now if this guy had continued going up the capacitor would charge and charge up to its voltage okay but in this case while it was still charging up the voltage starts dropping so if you check the voltage starts dropping at this somewhere around here the capacitor doesn't start dropping voltage alongside its source okay so while the source is dropping the capacitor then starts to discharge to feed the circuit to fill up the gap provided by that loss so you see it's it's filling up that shortage while this guy is actually going away it's turning off but well, he's filling up the laps and then it continues doing that meanwhile as he's doing it's also getting discharged so his own voltage is also dropping and it gets to a point this guy comes back to life and once it meets the capacitor at the voltage where it is and exceeds it the capacitor starts to charge again and continues charging until this guy drops again and so that's what happens consistently so once there's a lapse with your voltage source it comes to the rescue of the circuit and so that's why you have its wave this way okay if we use a let's try with a larger capacitor so if we try this with a 2.2 microfarad all right i have a 2.2 what was there was the one uf Okay, so I have a 2.2 UF. Okay, so if we take this out. Okay, and we have that run again. You can see we have a smoother wave than what we had before. Okay, so the 2.2 UF helps eliminate the fluctuations better. Alright, so the higher we go, we have a signal close, very close to a perfect DC signal. Alright, okay, so let me just clarify that this is not an AC signal. Alright, the blue wave, the yellow wave are not AC signals, they're not alternating current signals, they are just fluctuating DC signals. Okay, so if you look, if you look, they don't change direction, they don't, it's positive. Okay, All right. This icon here signifies the zero mark. They don't go below it, so they are not alternating signals. They are fluctuating DC signals. Okay, so you can see we have a smoother wave, and if we go higher, we'll invariably get a very smooth wave. So let's let's do this with. The 
33 UF capacitor. Okay, you see we have you see we have a smooth signal, a smooth yellow signal. We have for the yellow signal a voltage peak of okay a voltage peak of 1.57 volts we have an rms of 1.56 right for the blue signal we have a voltage peak of 3 volts we have an rms of 1.8 all right and we have a frequency of 248 hertz all right while here we don't have a frequency stated there because we have a smooth wave okay we have a smooth dc wave all right so the the capacitor successfully eliminated the fluctuations on the signal all right okay for surge protection let's get the signal from its very start at the beginning of the signal you can see we have a spike here Okay, let me let me make it more obvious. All right, so we we'll increase our, our amplitude to three volts, and uh, let's take our frequency back to two fifty. All right, so we run. You can see we have a spike here, but across the capacitor there's no response. Okay, let me use a capacitor with lesser value. So we had here a 33 volts with a 3 uf capacitor let's bring in the 1 uf or the okay the 2.2 uf let's bring in the 2.2 uf see what we get okay okay so it's clear that at the beginning we have a spike all right the capacitor doesn't respond to the spike the capacitor makes that junction irresponsive because what it does is it absorbs energy okay it will absorb energy to charge itself so once you have that spike the capacitor absorbs it to get itself charged so after that you see this guy climbs again but this is more like a gradual increase not like a spike but then the capacitor charges alongside it all right and then discharges until it gets past the transient phase to the phase where it's now more stable okay which we have here all right so so basically the capacitor protects it helps protect the circuit it finds itself from spikes all right has to do with the capacitor not passing DC signals but passing AC signals so DC signals don't go through the capacitor but AC signals do okay so we can see that here Okay, so okay, so that is the circuit that was done. All right, so we just have our resistor, and then we have our capacitor with the positive on the part with the higher voltage than the negative part. Okay, so we would want to see. Of course, we know this is an incomplete circuit. We don't have anything connected at this point. So we would have current flowing through our resistor and then into the capacitor. Okay, it's not a complete circuit we have here open, but we'll connect our probe here to see what signal goes in and what signal we get at this pin that will serve like the output pin of the capacitor. Okay, so we turn on our signal. Now, 
I would want us to notice something. Remember I said that this... Let's take it up. So, you can be clear on that. That this is our zero point, right? This is our zero point. We see that the first wave is above the second wave. The blue line is above the yellow line. Alright? And that's because the blue line is a fluctuating signal. Alright? But it has a DC component to it. Okay? And that DC component is what lifts it above the zero point. Remember, an alternating signal is supposed to be changing direction. Okay? But when it has a DC component, we don't... When it has a DC component ab above it, it fluctuates about that DC component. Alright? But in this case, with the yellow signal, the DC component is removed and we can see that we have the yellow line about the zero mark, okay? We have that yellow line about the zero mark, so it goes above it and comes below the zero mark, which means there's no DC component to this. Our DC component in this case is zero. So the capacitor successfully eliminates the DC component of this signal and lets us have only the alternating signal in this case. Okay, when it comes to decoupling, so we know decoupling is the process of eliminating or removing noise or voltage fluctuations from a signal and not making it transfer from one part of our circuit to another part, right? So you can see this is also a form of decoupling. Okay, even if we say we can increase this, uh, we can increase the frequency of our signal to maybe a thousand hertz. Okay, so let's say we have a signal that has picked up this noise along its way or as it's being processed it picked up this level of noise and um, putting a capacitor across it can help smoothing it out okay so in that case that would be the coupling all right so you can see our signal our input signal is the, the blue line we have a frequency of about a thousand hertz and uh peak is 1.23 volts okay why well, rms is 739 volts but you can see that uh signal on the yellow line is a dc signal the signal across the capacitor is a dc signal okay without any form of frequency so the capacitor actually successfully eliminates the fluctuations on the signal all right so we can use the capacitors too for decoupling and this is how it also does start